Today, I want to rank the stories of Doctor Who Series 12. I've talked pretty extensively about this one already, but this video is going to largely serve as the end to that discussion. I'm sure it will come up in part when I discuss Series 13, and if I do rankings in the future that include episodes from here, but this is probably going to be my last video dedicated singularly to this one series, at least for the time being. Really quick, before we get started, this ranking is entirely my opinion, and will probably not align with your own as it is very subjective. My thoughts on this video are not comprehensive reviews, though if you do want to know what I think more specifically about any individual story, you can check out my review for that episode. And with all that established, be wary of spoilers for the show as we get started in this ranking of Doctor Who Series 12. This is a story that seems to hold up just a little bit less every time I revisit it. I stand by my claim that this is not a bad episode, but I don't think I would go as far as to call it a good one either. I think this story is genuinely rather investing towards the start as our main characters attempt to have fun on their holiday, only to be greeted by problem after problem. And the dregs have a good deal of presence to them in their first scenes, but sadly none of the things that were really working towards the start of this one carry through as we saw the dregs lose any sort of menace they once had as they are shown in broad daylight. On top of that, the story genuinely throws quite a lot at the viewer with twist after twist that gives the story no room to really breathe and little time to let us become invested in the ongoing situations. This was definitely an episode that showed promise but failed to deliver on that particularly well. Praxius is just a good episode. It's engaging, it has a good energy to it, the supporting cast works reasonably well, the messages are incorporated into the story in an entertaining and natural way. As with Orphan 55, this Series 12 episode is a bit of a step down when compared to the writer's previous work, though admittedly it is less of a decline in quality than in that instance. But taking this episode both within the context of this series and on its own, it's just a good story. I enjoyed seeing our main characters split up and investigating all these different situations. I found what we learned in this story to make a lot of sense and explain the threat in a very understandable way for people who both are and aren't familiar with microplastics. It does once again try to have a twist villain like Pete McTie tried last time, and here it does work fine and serve its purpose, while not taking too much away from the overall message or derailing the adventure. It's a fun and inconsequential story, but far from one of this series' highlights. This is one that I have come to appreciate slightly more with time. Like with the previous two, it doesn't feed a whole lot into the overall plot of the show, but stands quite nicely as its own little historical set story. And while they do tend to be one of my least favorite genres of Doctor Who adventures, this one just has a rather comfy atmosphere to it and is made a more memorable piece due to the portrayal of Nikola Tesla, who is a genuinely interesting figure and has some enjoyable chemistry with the Doctor in particular. The actual villain, while ultimately simplistic and familiar was rather serviceable and fitting in the themes of this actual story, especially with regards to the whole Edison-Tesla dynamic. This was definitely an impressive one in some ways, and I liked it more than I expected to going in, but at the same time, it's not a whole lot to write home about and is one of the last episodes I'm going to think about when it comes to this series. Before you argue with me that this one doesn't count as a Series 12 story because it's a special, you can't stop me so just don't worry about it. This was the first time we saw our new Doctor encounter a known villain of the show, having not seen any throughout Series 11, and I found that Chibnall has done a great job of bringing back the Daleks in a familiar way that also felt incredibly exciting and a little bit fresh. It is most certainly reminiscent of Dalek in that it focuses on one individual threat and makes that the central point of the story, but what has managed to be done here is make the story feel different by changing the scale of the threat, the approach to it, and add a separate level of drama to this one in the form of Ryan reuniting with his dad. So while it's definitely comparable to that story, it does ultimately feel different. This Recon Scout Dalek is quite menacing throughout and I love seeing it get more powerful as this hour of television nears its end. The actual conclusion is the only part I take substantial issue with as it does feel a little bit silly and slightly undermines what was set up, but not to the point where the episode is ruined. This is definitely a really good story with a lot to love, but is dragged down a little bit by its messy climax. 
this was the only standalone story that really stood out to me this year, and it was one that I also wasn't as certain about during my initial viewing, but having seen it a few times at this point, I feel confident in saying that it is a great story. Not only do most of our main characters have a valuable role in this story, but the story itself is paced really well, especially towards the beginning, and gives us a number of things that you don't really get outside of Can You Hear Me? Namely, we get a better understanding of Yas's backstory, we get some rather creepy atmosphere and scenes, an extremely well incorporated message about the importance of mental health, and Doctor Who's first attempt at animation, I mean, sort of. In addition to offering some unique things in here, it's also just a really engaging television episode that does a decent job of jumping between different time periods, locations, and characters all within the span of about 50 minutes. I am going to stick up for this finale. It's only fourth on the list, but that's because obviously what's above is just even better. I love getting such a delightfully packed finale to close out this series of the show on. You get a lot in here with the Cybermen making a noteworthy appearance in the first part, the Master largely taking over in the second, and I do take a little bit of issue with the Master once again hijacking a Cyberman finale for his own ends, but that problem lies more in the pattern that has been set as opposed to this specific incident. And the Master the Master is quite good in here, I love the scenes he has with the Doctor, I think the two of them have a very well suited dynamic, and do help in making this finale what it is. There are a couple of points where Sasha Dewan's Master is pushed, I think just a little bit too far for him to work, but for the majority of the finale, I can't fault his portrayal of the character. I also love the way everything is revealed about the Doctor's backstory, and the mystery that it adds to the character, as we once again have truly no idea where she is from for the first time since the 1960s. This is by far one of, if not the all-time best historical set stories, featuring a stellar turn from the Cybermen in the form of a shod. It's quite interesting that we had not had a single Cyberman as a threat for a story before this point, usually there's quite a few of them. So I love getting a different take on these foes, as we see a shod still has emotion, making him stand out in that regard, and also being quite unique as this singular threat. The setting is also really cool, I love the atmosphere of this one more than probably any other story from this series. Series. The setting of a haunted house is brilliant, and I love nearly everything about the setting and its presentation. I also enjoyed Mary Shelley in this one. Though she doesn't have the kind of focus that Nikola Tesla, say, does in his episode, she is still rather good, and I enjoyed seeing our main cast interact with these characters towards the beginning. Also, the Doctor is as good as ever in this story, as we see her forced to make a difficult decision that could endanger the entire universe. This is the one that just knocked me out of my seat during the first viewing. It was genuinely the only thing I could think about for at least 24 hours. I felt like my brain had been completely fried. And on rewatch, this one absolutely holds up. The Jadun are great, Ruth is great, our two doctors are great, Captain Jack is great, and both of this story's revelations are pulled off in an absolutely fantastic way, with the scene at the lighthouse being one of the most memorable scenes of the entire show. The way this one continues to build and build and build is fantastic, and it just leaves you in a place where you want more Doctor Who. The story is really engaging, and I love what we get out of the Doctor as she is utterly baffled and distraught for the last 15 minutes of this one. It's just a great story, and also has some of Sagan Akinola's best music to date. I think I'm gonna have to put this one in first place because I am just a bit of a sucker for a great master story, and this is one of the best. I adore the mix of elements we get in this one, not just in the different locations and characters, but the style as the story attempts and succeeds in pulling off a number of different things. The reveal of the master was really a massive surprise to me, and I found Sasha Dewan's portrayal of the character to be really rather unique, while also entirely fitting with everything that has been already established established about the character. The bulk of this story is really great, but it is also absolutely elevated for me by the master, the twist at the end of the first part, and the end of part two, in which our doctor sees the destruction of what is effectively her home world, and learns that it was caused by the master. It's just great stuff all around, and the dynamic between these two characters absolutely makes this one what it is.
And that's that. That's my ranking for Doctor Who Series 12. If you would like to leave your ranking down below, then feel free to do so. And this is basically my final word on Series 12 for now. I'm sure it will come up in the future when I do another ranking of the series, when I do maybe a ranking of the finales or whatever I do in the future. It's going to come up. But this is the end of me actually focusing on it, at least for the time being. So with all that said, I do hope to see you around soon. I have lots of Doctor Who videos planned, and I hope to see you around for those. And if not, that is absolutely fine, so long as you know that I appreciate your time here today. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, take care, and have a lovely week.